Hey everybody, it's Harry from Slap Your Daddy Barbecue, the YouTube channel that teaches you how to master barbecue so you can spread barbecue love. Thanks to the nice folks at El Cortez Meat Market, they provided the meat for this cook. I am cooking some uh, bavette steaks, which is a bottom sirloin flap steak. These bottom sirloin flaps or bavettes are from Creekstone Farm and they're prime grade. They're super delicious. We made a uh, little fajita style marinade for it. We're gonna cook it to perfection. Serve it with some of my favorite Mexican style mac and cheese, spiked with a little bit of special ingredients including tahini. And we're gonna have chicharrones on the top of the mac and cheese. Gonna make this an absolutely amazing fajita steak babette. Let's go in here and make our rub seasoning for our bavette steak. Draw a little bit of inspiration from a fajita style rub that I like to make. And it's got hints of cumin and coriander, a little bit of a spice, and then a little bit of zing comes from the citric acid. So I'll show you guys my little recipe from scratch. We have four parts of kosher salt, two parts of regular sugar, two parts of turmeric, which is a ginger, dry ginger powder, one part of paprika. You can use Spanish or smoked, sweet paprika is up to you. And uh, this is the little secret, you can give it a little bit of tang, a little bit of citric acid, which is a fruit acid. This is actually uh, a fruit acid that uh, gives it a nice kind of flavor and a kind of a pucker up flavor on the uh, beef. Of course, uh, you got to add a lot of cumin. I have two parts of cumin here, a little bit of coriander, one part coriander, and some chili flakes. So about eight ingredients here in my little fajita inspired rub. All right, ready to apply on steak. And this will keep uh, in the freezer for up to two years and a refrigerator uh, for about six months. So I uh, keep a pantry also for, for many months. Uh, everything here doesn't degrade except maybe the chili and the paprika. Uh, those should be fresh. We have some bavette steak courtesy of the nice folks at El Cortez Meat Market. Ruben Sr. and Ruben Jr. were kind enough to provide some extra of these bavette steaks, which I'm going to make into a fajita style inspired steak for you guys to enjoy. Let's wet the steak with some Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire. This will allow the rub to stick. Also give a little bit of umami flavor before we put the rub on. It's gonna wet the meat like so, and it's best to let it sit overnight if you can, and let the flavor penetrate the steak. Apply a nice um, even coat, about medium heavy, depending on how thick your steaks are. These are cut about uh, three quarter inch thick. And you want to uh, leave the rub on a little bit, an hour or sometimes overnight. If you do it overnight, don't put so much rub, put a little bit less, a little bit over. Repeat on the other side. And Leave it in the bag overnight to marinate. All right, so we're going in the refrigerator for overnight soak. Been out 20 minutes and we're ready to flip our Babette steaks. about 135 ish melt four tablespoons of butter add about four tablespoons of flour you want to make a roux for the uh, macaroni and uh, you want to add about the same amount of flour as you add the, the fat so whether you use butter you use oil or you use lard or bacon grease it's about half and half, so one part of the oil and one part of the flour. You want to use the whisk to make sure that there's no lumps. You want to kind of cook the roux until it turns a little bit brown. 
before we add the liquid. We're making what is known as a classic French bechamel. Bechamel is roux with something like a milk or a cream. The color of the bechamel is usually kind of whitish and you can cook it longer. Start off kind of pale brown, then you can get to medium brown, then you can get to dark brown. And this is the basis to make a lot of things like gumbo and jambalaya, uh, gravy and so on. So this is a basic white roux, a bechamel type sauce to start our macaroni side dish. It's brown enough, I'm going to add a little bit of liquid now, half and half. Once the heat activates the protein, gluten strands, it'll start to thicken up. You gotta keep stirring at this stage to make sure that your macaroni and cheese sauce is not lumpy. Make sure the heat is not too hot so you don't burn it. You have the right consistency of the sauce. You wanna dip it a spoon in there and if it holds the shape like that, that means that it's ready. Add a little bit of water. I have some uh, jalapeno pepper jack shredded. Add one cup. You can put more or less cheese as you like. I like my really cheesy. You want to get it the right consistency. You don't want it to be too thick. You don't want to be too thin. So you can coat it nicely. So you notice I have not salted it because the cheese is salty. So you really want to balance your flavor. So as a tip, I like to season my bechamel sauce after I get all the cheese in. That way I can adjust the saltiness to the right level. A lot of times the cheese is very salty. You don't really need to add any more salt. We added all our cheese. It's got, it's got the right consistency. Do the taste test here. So it's a little bit salty, so I don't want to overdo the salt. So now we're going to make it a kind of a Mexican style mac and cheese to match the fajita seasoned steak. I'm going to add a little bit of cumin. I like talking about taco flavors here. And it's going to be absolutely amazing. A little bit of cayenne pepper or spice. Probably about one half a teaspoon. I like one tablespoon of organic cumin, a little bit of white pepper. The secret ingredient, of course, is a little bit of nutmeg in your mac and cheese. Give it kind of like floral note. Probably about half a teaspoon. My secret ingredient for making it a Mexican style mac and cheese is to add some tahin. Tahin is a citrus kind of a uh, seasoning used for like fruit, Mexican style mango lada and drinks. And that gives it a nice kind of citrusy, chili, lime flavor. Absolutely amazing. Give it a taste. Wow, it's really good. This is absolutely amazing. So a little bit more tahini. I like tahini. And our sauce is ready. Let's fold in our cooked macaroni into the cheese sauce. Mexican style mac and cheese with some uh, pork skin chicharrones. Looks absolutely amazing. Wow, nice crunch. A little bit spicy. I can feel that lime from the tahin, chili, and uh, the heat of salt. Absolutely amazing. I'm going to try the uh, bottom sirloin flap of the bavette steak with a little bit of fajita marinade made from scratch. You can see it's absolutely gorgeous, even has a nice uh, little smoke ring to it. Take a bite of that. It's super moist, tender, and delicious. That fajita style marinade I showed you guys how to make with the citric acid really seasoned and penetrated the meat. We smoked it and then we seared it. So it's got a little bit of a kiss of smoke. And the flavors are absolutely amazing. A little bit of a kind of a fajita style flavor. Pairs absolutely perfectly with this tahin mac and cheese together with my uh, chicharrones pork skin. You get the crunch, you get the texture, you get the beefy flavor, and you get a hint of that lime in there. And it's absolutely an amazing combination of flavors. If you've never tried this kind of combination of dishes, I suggest you give it a shot and let me know in the comments below if you like it. Enough of me talking now, let's go see if Mr. Beans wants to try some. I hope Mr. Beans likes this bavette steak with a little bit of fajita style seasoning with a mac and cheese done with a little bit of a tahin 
twist. All right, beans, no brisket today, but we have some uh, Bavette steak for you. Checking out the steak. Oh, he's eating the mac and cheese first. Hope he likes that kind of tahin flavor. Tacking the bottom sirloin flap now, the Bavette steak. Polishing it off. I think he likes it. Thumbs up, Mr. Beans. I think he likes it. He's licking the plate clean. Good job, Beans. Well done. Thanks for stopping by watching my Bavette steak episode with the fajita homemade seasoning. Hope you guys picked up some tips on how to cook a uh, bottom sirloin flap today. like to thank my patrons for supporting my channel, crowdfunding efforts for me to put out free content on YouTube. Until the next video, we will see ya.